Okay, this is classifying matter towards the end of chapter one now. We have different ways to classify matter. The first way is to identify something as a pure substance, which means it always has the same composition. And there are two examples. We have elements and compounds. Elements are the things that you see on the periodic table, like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and they are made of one type of atom. So if it's one type of atom, that is easy to see that it's pure. Now, compounds are made of different elements, but the reason they're still pure is that they're always found in the same ratio. So if you look at NaCl, that's sodium chloride, we always know that to be salt. If the ratio changes to anything else like, let's say, NaCl2 or something like that, then it's not salt anymore. So when we look at a formula, and it's always in that same ratio as a compound, that's what makes it a pure substance. Okay, now we have mixtures. Okay, these are substances that are not pure. The first type is homogeneous, and this is a mixture that is the same or uniform throughout, and another word for it is a solution. Some examples include salt water. For example, if you go swimming in the ocean, um, you can taste salt water, but you can't taste chunks of salt separate from the water. They're evenly mixed. Another example is air. Um, you have nitrogen, oxygen, a lot of other gases in the air, but you can't tell which gas you are breathing in unless that air becomes polluted. Brass is something that you might see um, like in an orchestra, it's the shiny gold instruments but that's not um, pure. That is a mixture of zinc and copper. So two metals mixed together create the brass. And that belongs in this last category, the alloy, which is in general just a mixture of metals. So you can see brass as an example. And then also take your jewelry. Um, you have jewelry that has numbers, right? Like 14 karat, 24 karat. Um, those numbers um, identify the purity. So the higher the number, the more pure metal that you have, like gold, for instance. But jewelry is never pure gold. There are other elements or metals in there because gold itself is too soft um, to be in the jewelry by itself. So that's an alloy, mixture of metals. Okay, then we have heterogeneous mixtures, which are mixtures with regions that have different properties. We also call this a suspension because the particles are suspended in the solution. So you have sand and water, like our beaches, right? If that mixed together, how would you have a beach? Um, how about food? Oil and vinegar, uh, it's a type of dressing, right? But you need to shake it in order <clears throat> to taste the oil and the vinegar together. And that usually doesn't last very long, so you have to keep shaking it. Okay. Now, elements and compounds uh, will not be separated because they are pure, but mixtures can be and you can separate them without changing the composition of the substances you are separating. So we will be doing a lab in this class called distillation and that is a way to separate um, often two liquids based on their boiling points. So here's the setup. So a common thing to separate would be like alcohol and water. So they would start together in this flask and then as you boil them, the boiling point of water and alcohol, they're different. So the water will stay here and the alcohol will rise up and then condense back into this other beaker. So that is a way to separate mixtures, and that's called distillations based on boiling points. You can also separate based on size. So here we have filtration, and you can see that you would have the liquid passing through and then something heavier staying on top of the filter paper. So that's another way to separate mixtures.